Welcome to Snap Induction Common Core. I'm Anthony, I'm the Student Ambassador at the University of Hong Kong and also your host for today. The Common Core is a series of transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary curriculum um, where students are, are encouraged to uh, explore different areas of inquiry, namely science, technology and big data, arts and humanities, global issues and China. We hope through this today's event, you'll be able to learn a bit more about the Common Core curriculum. And today joining with me, we have Professor Gray Kosher Lindgren as well as two HEU students, Chow and Tiffany, to share about their experiences with the Common Core. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Zoom chat function uh, to ask any of the professors or the students as well. Without further ado, let's have Professor Gray uh, tell us more about the Common Core. Great, thank you so much. And congratulations to everybody out there uh, as you begin to make decisions about next steps. You're at a very exciting point of your lives and you wanna be thinking about how to set yourself up for the best potential experience in a university and beyond. Um, talk with people, get as much information as you can, come to different sessions like this, explore your own interest, and really just, it's a fantastic pivot for you and a stepping into a new stage of your life. So take advantage of that in every way you can. And we're here to help you with that. The university is here for you. And we wanna be sure in the Common Core that we're meeting you in a way that will be profoundly useful and engaging and intriguing for you. We want your learning to be your learning. We want you to begin to sort through issues of responsibility and ownership and creativity. This takes a lot of time and we're all still working at it. And we've set up the Common Core to be as accessible to you as we can. And I would just invite all of you to be in touch with me as the director anytime you'd like to be. I stay up all night and do email. So uh, that's just an open invitation. So what I'll do, I'll give you just a very brief overview of the whole Common Core. And then much more importantly than, than that will be the student voices. They've, they've been through this process. Uh, they've engaged in a whole lot of different things. They know it's, it's good, bad, and ugly sides. Uh, and then I think we'll have a question and answer session down the road that you're encouraged to ask anything at all. So the slide that you're looking at now is one slide about the structure of the Common Core. All of you will be required to take the Common Core, most six courses, some four courses, depending on your program. But this is, in my opinion, and I've worked in a lot of these programs around the world, the very best kind of general education program on the planet. And I say that with a lot of evidence behind me. Um, and we can talk more about what that might be mean later on. But basically, uh, this, this central phrase, what we want you to end up with not just from the Common Core, but from your university experiences, creative transdisciplinary capacities. That's a very long, confusing word, transdisciplinary, but it's not complicated. It just means how to make connections between academic disciplines, between your university life and your outside of university life, your communities, your families, your work related things, and a kind of ability to think on your feet quickly. Uh, so that's the, that's the goal for all that we're doing um, in the Common Core. A little more specifically, those, those green phrases around the side, those are the rationales that we most value in terms of why we created the Common Core as we have. The first is active learning. We don't want your learning to be passive. We don't want you sitting in your seat listening to somebody. We want you up and doing things. And you should really be thinking about what do you like to do that's tied into intellectual understanding and social movements and things like that. Uh, so active learning, lots of things to think about there. The second thing is imagination, knowledge, and friendship. Um, always in the university, we hear about knowledge. That's incredibly important. But we also want to focus on imagination and the way that you move yourselves through your university career and think about possibilities. And finally, friendships. The Common Core serves students from all 10 faculties, 
And this will be one of your few chances, along with co-curricular things uh, like student associations, to get to know people uh, from other faculties. That will be very important for you in the long run and also just in the first year. The third one is ethics on the ground. Uh, I'm not interested in kind of theories of ab uh, ethics in the abstract. We're all faced with eth ethical dilemmas all the time, and I want us to think together about what are the most creative responses to those and how we can live in this complex, complex world uh, with as much grace as possible. Uh, and finally, career readiness. Uh, your first year is gonna be fantastic and it will be confusing and you'll have tons of information to deal with, but already be thinking about a career, not a job. Your first job is not gonna be that important, but your career is. How do you see yourself moving through time around your own interest and what, what the world needs you to do as well? So those are the rationales. Uh, let me go down to the very bottom of the screen. These are called areas of inquiry. And the courses are all divided into these four areas and you'll have to take one in each area and then a couple of more. Uh, the first is science, technology, and big data. Uh, it's absolutely essential in our world that we're conversant with the principles of science and technology and big data in a studio or on your phones or as you ride DMTR is with us all the time. And you need to think about it, not just passively receive it. The next is arts and humanities. Uh, we have a creative arts minor, but also a lot of courses around history, philosophy, sociology, things like that. Uh, it's not easy to understand ourselves and our place in the world. And so arts and humanities will take that on in a number of different ways. Uh, the next is global issues. Every one of us is a global citizen uh, just by being in the position that we're in. And so again, how do we think about that, not just assume it to be the case? How can you take what you know and articulate it towards uh, global and local interaction? And they're very mm, complexly implicated with each other. And finally, China. It's very important for all of us to understand more about the history of China, what's going on now with, with China's relationships with other parts of the world, um, how we can engage with economics, poetry, history, mythology, Chinese medicine, and, and so forth and so on. So those are the, the areas of knowledge. And we, we set this up so that you could have an expansive exposure to a wide range of topics. All of you will be in a major. That's very, very important. And that's an important aspect of your university career. But the Common Core will help make these connections across disciplines and across methodologies and in these areas of inquiry. So you'll have tons of choice. We have 160, 170 courses. They're all created by professors for the Common Core, which makes the Common Core very, very different than most of these general education programs in the world. Uh, and there's a very wonderful uh, process of continuing to work on our teaching uh, so that we can best engage you. And the last thing I'll say right now is that we want students to be our partners. And so in terms of course creation, project creation, um, research in the field, uh, anytime you want to take that initiative, uh, there's lots of structures for you to do that through. So I think right now that's enough as kind of an overview and I'll turn it back to Anthony. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Professor Gray, for your insightful sharing and some really good overview to the Common Core. So now I'd like to invite Chow, Pastor of Science, to share about her experience uh, with the Common Core. Chow, please. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chow. I just recently graduated from uh, the University of Hong Kong, majoring in biochemistry and minor in psychology. So um, so when I first came to Hong Kong U, I look at the requirement for my graduation and I realized that beside the core courses that I have to take for my major, my minor, my elective, I look at the requirements and I realized that I also have to take six courses across four areas of inquiry or AOIs within the common core curriculum. And I remember I didn't really uh, knew about the common core before that. So I was really curious uh, about the curriculum and also at the same time thinking about what are the advantages that I can 
have from taking these courses. And uh, after four years uh, and after I graduated, I thought about it and reflected on that. I realized that there are a lot of things that I could experience by taking the Common Core. So first and foremost, it, it was a wonderful opportunity for me to meet friends from a variety of faculties. So I would be attending lectures with people from social sciences, law, medicine, engineering, uh, humanities, philosophy. And uh, I would be joining discussion with them during tutorials or doing projects together. And I think that experience really helped me enhance my knowledge and broaden my perspective. And um, another advantage was that because the Common Core curriculum um, expand for four areas of inquiry. So I was challenged and at the same time encouraged to take courses that outside of my discipline, which is science. Say for example, if you look at um, the slide here, there are arts and humanity, global issue, China, which are not within my field of science and technology. So uh, what I mean by encourage was that because I would take, I would challenge myself to take courses that I might be very interested in, but I wouldn't take it with if I wasn't required to take it within a common core. So I would give you um, a sharing on a course that I took in arts and humanity, which is uh, the science and art of perception. So even though I major in science, I'm always very interested in arts and also paintings. I'm, I'm fascinated by how uh, artists and painters could make use of their observation around the world and people perspective to use their technique to create paintings. And at the same time, uh, sometimes they would create illusion. Um, and I think that's really, really interesting. So I took the course wanting to know the scientific explanation behind these illusion. So at the background of this slide, you can see uh, the picture of Mona Lisa, which is a very famous uh, painting by Leonardo da Vinci. And the interesting thing that made this painting so famous was because if you look at Mona Lisa, sometimes you will see her smiling, sometimes you would not see her smiling. And I was really curious about this phenomenon. So I took the course and after that, I learned the scientific explanation. So if you focus on the picture and you really look at her mouth, you could see really, really fine detail. And that could, could be explained by high spatial frequency. So that's why you, see, you wouldn't see her smiling. But if you shift your focus to the background, then you wouldn't use your central vision to look at the mouth area anymore, but you would use your peripheral vision. And by that, you wouldn't be able to see such fine details anymore and you will see her smiling. And I, I guess I was really um, excited after this discovery that later on, I went further and took a perception course within my minor in psychology. So that's something really, really interesting to me, experience with the Common Core. But beyond the curriculum, uh, the Common Core also created a lot of projects for students to participate. So I'll just share a few examples here. Um, for in my second year, I joined the HKU Utrecht Research Exchange, where I conducted a transdisciplinary research with students from Hong Kong U and students in the Netherlands. I also joined the Passion Project, which was a series of workshops with um, hosts and organizers uh, come to share their passion. So they are from the university, they also came from NGO or startup or company and they share their passion, their aspiration for their career. And I found myself thinking about my passion, my interest, and how to translate that into my career and what I wanna do in the future. Also at the end of any academic year, the Common Core would host a student learning festival where students could display and exhibit their work. It could be art, like painting, comics, picture. It could also be like music, dancing. It can be written like uh, written form, which is a uh, journal or, uh, or short story. And uh, you feel free to create anything that you want to exhibit within this festival. Um, and last but not least, I would like to share with you a project that I participated in my final year, which is the um, Critical Zone Gender City and Wellbeing Transdisciplinary Undergraduate Research Experience. 
So students who join this project have the absolute freedom to propose any research of their interest. They can gather, gather their old group, find their old mentor, and get funding from the Common Core. But on top of everything provided, the Common Core will also provide students with peer mentoring support. And that was my role in this project. And as a peer mentor, I supported students' groups with planning their project, proposal, revision, and also implementation. But I think uh, most importantly, as a peer mentor, it's less of about me giving, me, giving students any advice or um, professional comments. It's more about me joining the learning journey with the students and get to know more about their research interests and see the project come into place. So that was a really interesting experience for me. And because this critical zone project uh, is based on the critical zone concept, which is a geoscience, um, it's taken from geoscience to display the thin layer on earth where life is created. And uh, it is taken further by a philosopher named Bruno Latour to, um, to create and understand the critical relationship between humans and our living environment. So as to address the current crises that we are facing today. For example, uh, climate change is a global issue that affects everyone around the world, regardless of the nation, cultures, or uh, communities. And the critical zone concept call for the collaboration and uh, people collaboration between people from a variety of disciplines to work together and come up with a transdisciplinary solution so as to solve a very complicated problem like global uh, climate change. Um, so with the backbone of critical zone and transdisciplinary research, students can choose to tackle one of the sustainable developmental goals. So currently the critical zone project focus on uh, SDG number three, which is good health and well-being, number five, gender equality, and number 11, city. So students can feel free to propose and choose one of the SDG to do their project. And I would very, very much encourage uh, students to take this opportunity to explore their interest, their passion, and not just joining the critical zone, but join any project organized by the Common Core so that you learn more about yourself and make the most out of your university experience. So that's it for my sharing. So now I'll pass on to Tiffany, who is also a student, and she will share her experience with the Common Core as well. Thank you. Right, so hi everyone, I'm Tiffany. I'm a government and law student. Currently I'm in my fourth year and I'll be finishing my studies next year. So um, because of um, the limitations of my degree, I only take four Common Core courses, which, so I take one course from each of um, the area of inquiry. And the names of the area of the inquiry might sound like really big names. So I will be sharing a little bit um, of my experience studying Common Core at, at HKU. So first of all, for scientific and technological literacy, the course that I took was uh, The World of Waves. And it's actually my favorite course, even though I myself is not a science student. Uh, and I'll be talking a little bit more about it later on. Um, next, for global issue, I took a course called the uh, Europe Without Borders. And in that course, we got to explore issues related to both closed and open borders in Europe and also um, issues with migration and immigration and refugees. Um, I took it in my first year and it was a really hot issue back then. So I felt very lucky that I got to explore such a hot issue um, back when everyone's talking about it. Uh, for arts and humanities, uh, I took a course on sexuality and gender. Um, in that course, uh, I got a chance to um, meet with um, people um, in the LGBT community in Hong Kong. And uh, it actually broadened my horizon a lot. So we had a, a lot of guest lectures. We also um, watched documentaries and films in class. And what I liked most about the course was that we had a lot of very um, open-minded, very open discussions during the uh, lessons. So um, I think that is also so something that makes the Common Course so special. And last but not least, for China, 
the course I took was modernity and traditional Chinese thought. Um, as someone who is personally interested in philosophy, um, that gave me an opportunity to explore something outside of um, what I'm studying for my degrees. And in that course, uh, we didn't just study like Chinese thoughts and philosophy. We also had to get to know the history, the culture, and even the politics behind all of this. And um, as someone who grew up in Chinese culture, um, as someone who lives in Hong Kong, that is something very valuable and very interesting to learn about. So um, as I mentioned before, my favorite course was uh, called The World of Waves. Uh, when I enrolled in it, I didn't know what to expect. And to be honest, I was a little bit intimidated by the name of it uh, because I know that I'm not a science person myself. Uh, I was really glad to learn that uh, the course was really tailored for students from different faculties. And so in the end, we not only learn about the scientific theories and how to do calculations, we learn about how to apply these theories in our daily lives. And a lot of the topics and inventions and phenomena that were being explored in the lessons were very much related to our everyday life. So we look at radio waves, we look at earthquakes and tsunami, and basically just how the internet and mobile phones work. So I find it an interesting experience to learn about things that I don't usually uh, would go to approach. Uh, and also at the same time, I was really glad that I knew something beyond what I used to know before taking this course. The other thing that I like a lot about this course was that it gave us a chance to explore a topic and an issue that we're personally interested in by doing the self-directed essay and presentation. Uh, so for me, I am interested in space science. I'm interested in stars and how you know, the universe came to be what it is right now. So even though I'm not too knowledgeable in this area, I still got to try to look at how waves and telescope work um, in this part of science. And uh, I not only look at the scientific theories and methods behind it, I also look at the impact that it has on society and how it has impacted human development throughout history. So uh, I would say that this course really gave me a chance to integrate some new knowledge um, in science, but also uh, allow me to work on something deeper in what I'm personally interested in, in social sciences, in humanities, et cetera. So generally, I would say that CC uh, in HKU is a great opportunity for students to learn knowledge beyond uh, what they usually study in their majors. Uh, because of the limitation of my degree, I don't get a lot of free electives. So it was really important that I had a chance to explore something new and beyond my degree in the first few years um, of my studies here. And I would say that um, things that you learn in Common Core it's not just limited to you know, your exams or your assignments in the Common Core. You also get to learn and apply um, things that you learn in Common Core in say your majors and your minors. So for example, um, I first got to know about um, the issue of migration and refugees um, in Common Core in the global um, issue course um, about Europe. And a few years later, when I took an elective uh, on that um, for my political science major, I realized that that came back to me and um, I had an edge um, in learning what they're uh, teaching in class because I first got to know about it, not just from a political science perspective, but also from say a cultural and sociological perspective um, back when I took the course in Common Core. Um, so generally, I would say that the Common Core is a great chance for you to understand the world around us better. Um, these issues um, that they are covering in the Common Core are not only academic, they also, professors and tutors, they try very hard to relate it to your everyday life, to what you see um, you know, in your day, everyday life as you go to school, um, et cetera. Um, so uh, having this sense, um, having this Understanding of the world, uh, I would say, is a great ability to have um, in the 21st century. And I'm sure um, that it has helped me a lot um, as I um, go on with my studies or even um, when I start working in the future. Uh, and generally, I would say that the Common Core is a great opportunity for anyone to work and collaborate with a more transdisciplinary mindset. Uh, you get to see uh, how different people work and think um, from different faculties during your course. 
um, you also get to start thinking in a more transdisciplinary way when you start getting into Common Core. So you start seeing things, not just from something that you're always familiar with, but you also start to see that, oh, there is a science side to it. There is a humanity side to it. And uh, with the projects and with the assignments that you do, uh, you learn to how to put them together and develop your own perspective on a lot of things in the world. And lastly, I want to talk about um, what Common Core offers um, in HKU beyond just the curriculum and beyond the classroom. Um, so like Chow, I also joined the Transdisciplinary Research Exchange uh, both last year and this year. And it is, yeah, it's a research project with students from um, Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, I personally find it such a great opportunity to, first of all, work on something trans transdisciplinary with students from different cultural backgrounds and different disciplines. Uh, so for example, um, currently I'm working on a video essay with uh, a student in Utrecht, and we're exploring the people and urban scape of Hong Kong in social movements here. So uh, we're looking at the interaction between the city and how people move around, especially uh, when they're participating in social movements. And for me, um, even though I'm already interested in social movements, being a political science student, I don't usually look at it from such a uh, transdisciplinary, such a um, critical zone perspective. Uh, and right now, um, when I'm working with students in Utrecht, I get to see things more from their perspective, um, both as someone who uh, has not experienced um, social movements in Hong Kong, but also um, as this, these students have their own um, cultural and academic backgrounds. So we're looking at how um, symbols and how buildings interact with the people here and how they play a role um, in social movements here. And I do think that that has helped me a lot um, in understanding um, Hong Kong, a city that I thought I knew a lot about, and it has given me a new perspective on both the issue and also just the city around me. Uh, so I would say that this experience um, is, has, such, has been such a great one, and I would totally recommend anyone um, to join um, when you're in HKU. So um, that wraps up my um, sharing today. And um, I hope you all have a great experience uh, with Common Core. Thank you, Tiffany, for, for your sharing. And also thank you, Chow, for your sharing as well. I'm pretty sure you learned quite a lot uh, as induction into the Common Core, especially for like the research programs as well. I'm pretty sure they will have a lot of questions for you in the upcoming Q&A session. But now we'll move on to sort of an open discussion forum. And hopefully that the viewers can actually get uh, more insights into the Common Core. So I have a question for all of you to start okay. off with. So actually, students are actually allowed to study um, electives that are across faculties and different from their majors. So why is Common Core actually like required for students? What makes it unique or different from the elective courses at HKU? How about if I take that one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fantastic question. Um, so as I said, to start with, every university in the world has um, a general education program. And so there's the question of how do we shape that program uh, for the most exciting student learning? And you can do general electives, all of which are good, um, but the Common Core gives a couple of advantages for us. Uh, first, all the courses are specifically created for the Common Core. Um, so they're not courses taken from economics or biology or history or uh, dentistry or whatever. They're specifically created for the experience of the Common Core which is gonna always and necessarily be cross-disciplinary and active learning. So it gives the teachers uh, a beautiful opportunity to shape their own teaching in a different way. It gives the students, as Chow and Tiffany said, uh, a moment where you can meet people from across the whole university with all the different sets of assumptions and methodologies engaged there. So one thing, good question, is that we get to create specific courses. Um, another thing is we, we get to have all of these co-curricular projects that are organized by the Common Core. 
So one thing you'll find out about the university is sometimes it's not completely coherent. All the pieces don't fit together all the time very well. So since we created this unified program called the Common Core, there's an enormous diversity, 170, 180 courses across the university, but there's also coherent pathways for students. And so I want all the students, I want you to think about what you want your pathway to be through the Common Core. That can be formalized through a transdisciplinary minor, which you, we can talk about later, or it's just your own choice as to how to make your way through. So for me, free electives are great because we learn new stuff, but I think the Common Core gives coherency and a kind of depth and a kind of multiple points of interaction with students that would not happen if everything were still based only in the faculties. What about Chow and Tiffany? What would you say um, is actually different from the courses that you took in your major minor? Um, yeah, so like Craig share and also what I talk about in um, what my sharing. So it's because when I took the Common Core and as well as my friends, we had a mindset that we're not taking an elective with a specific faculty organize it. We're taking a common core and we know that we have to look, uh, work together and discuss a topic together uh, with our background um, of major and minor study, but at the same time, trying to seek for new perspective. So say, for example, when I took the CC of uh, perception of arts, sorry, science and art of perception. Then uh, I was working with a group of students from medicine and also psychology uh, major and me as a science student. So we were looking at the picture and then we contributing to the discussion from our own perspective. So they would ask questions that um, intrigue me. And then at the same time, I also raise questions of my own. So I think it's a very good opportunity that a very unique opportunity that I wouldn't get if I take just an elective or a minor course. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I would say that the common core and free electives are two different experience um, and the common core, you really were encouraged to see things from not just one perspective, but from multiple disciplinary perspectives. So I will again take um, the course on um, Europe Without Borders as an example. Uh, I took that course in the Common Core and then later on I also took a course on migration and the European Union um, for my major um, as, a free, as an elective. Um, so in the Common Core course, uh, I was not just taught to see things from a political, um, policy perspective. But then I also had to do movie reviews. I also had to learn about the history um, before all of this happened. And that gave me a different perspective into say how people are reacting to it or why the borders in Europe are shaped like this. Um, but then that's not something that I would uh, do or um, learn about in the elective that I took. Um, and in free electives or in just any um, faculty disciplinary uh, elective, you are um, expected to see things from a more academic, or I would say more focused in one academic perspective. And um, that is something that sets the Common Core apart. Yeah, I think I totally agree as well, because I think it really just broadens your perspective, and actually expands your horizon, exposing yourself to those new learning opportunities as well. So actually on this sort of topic, I think many of our viewers may actually be interested in the global outreach or the research programs, the extracurricular programs of the Common Core. So other than like the projects that students have mentioned earlier, perhaps Professor Gray, you may, you know, uh, expand a little bit on those programs that the Common Core actually provides? Yeah, so there's a lot to talk about here and I encourage everybody to go to the website, a great website. Um, we have something called the Common Core Global Experience, which you can get Common Core credit for work you're doing around the world. You have to have a faculty facilitator, but it's a very, it's six credits and it's on your own project uh, anywhere in the world. That's been de delayed, of course, given COVID, um, but that will be an opportunity once we're sort of past this moment. Uh, as Chow mentioned, we have a new transdisciplinary research initiative, and uh, I, I won't go into all the details of that, but it's, it's student initiated, and there's an extraordinarily beautiful range of ideas and interest out there. There's groups working on marketing, 
uh, groups working on environmental education, groups working on historiography. Uh, there's, and so I think that's, um, programmatically, that's the most powerful offering. But for all of you, please get involved with research as soon as you can. It's not something to wait for until you're a junior or senior. It's something, it's just a habit of inquiry with other people who are curious and that you will be delighted to be around. So find ways, there are many different ways of doing that, but to sort of further your own inquiry, that's what research is. Um, we also have other kinds of uh, international outreach um, through the global liberal arts design ex experiments uh, with 70 universities around the world with a, a colleague in, in India. So our attitude is that, yes, you've got to pay very close attention to your everyday life in Hong Kong, and that's absolutely connected to these global trends. And so we want students to have as much opportunity as possible across that whole range of options. Yes, and I think it's great that actually HTU has this opportunity for students to go and explore outside of their curriculum as Absolutely. well. So it's definitely a great opportunity. So uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Chow and Tiffany now. So as students, you have already completed like the compulsory common core uh, curriculum. So, but looking back oh, out of the four years inquiry, so which one or which ones are actually the most interesting to you? Maybe you could elaborate a bit on that. Maybe Tiffany first this time? Yeah, I would say um, for me personally, uh, I find global issues, um, this AOI, the most interesting. Uh, well, I would say that this is the AOI with the most diversity. Um, and given that, you know, the other three AOIs are already very diverse. Um, but the global issue um, is really one that would offer you a wide selection of topics to choose from. So um, apart from um, what we usually think about when we think of global issues, say like, oh, issues on the news. Um, there are also courses on say um, Hong Kong cinema, on say like um, ethics and philosophy, um, or um, how you know, science and money play a role in our everyday life. And these, I these concepts and these ideas are usually not things that you would think of. Um, in say your university training or in your everyday life. And that's why I find the global issue um, area um, the most interesting one given the flexibility and the potential for um, there to be a lot of different topics and courses um, to be created. In. Yeah, and I actually was about to share a course on global issue actually. So I took uh, a CC um, course on uh, within the area of inquiry of global issue. And it was about uh, the risk and also the action and prevention of suicide. So it was the first opportunity uh, for me to get exposed to this topic. And I was very um, uh, surprised seeing the statistic of uh, the suicidal rate across the globe and how that related to a diversity of uh, issues and also culture within different communities. And at the same time, the course was actually taught by and organized by um, the Suicide Prevention uh, Center in Hong Kong U. So the lecturer and the course organizer uh, came up with the topic as a way to help students understand more about this issue and not just from a social aspect, but also from scientific and medicine. And uh, they also introduce a lot of way to tackle this, not just on a like microscope, but like how each and every one of us can help someone at risk of suicide. So I remember learning about the hotline uh, provided in Hong Kong, or what are the ways that you can uh, talk to someone that is um, having a bit problems and how you can help them and at the same time, how you can kind of help yourself. So I think in a way, um, I get to learn about this global issue that I might not have an opportunity to look at in a very warm and welcoming and also very intellectual intrigue environment. Yeah. That's actually great to hear because mm. it's just a simple course that you could get so much out of it. Yes. So it's definitely something to look forward to for those who are joining us uh, next year. But now I'm going to open um, the questions to the floor now. So this is a question that is directed at Professor Gray. 
So can I choose the course I want to study under each subject? Uh, yes, absolutely. So you'll have this whole array of courses to look at, and you should spend some time sorting through those choices. Uh, there will be all sorts of information out there that being shared by senior students and listen to that, but don't pay too much attention to that. Um, and then figure out, talk to me, talk to your seniors here. Um, I would say there's lots of choice and also figure out how the courses might relate to one another in your own mind for your own sake. Um, so yes, absolutely, you'll have freedom of choice to, ch to make um, all, all of those choices over time. So I've got another question from another student. So will most of the courses for the 2021 fall semester be provided as in-person? This is a good question and difficult to completely answer right now. We're going basically going back face-to-face -face at the university. Um, and so a number of common core, a number of your courses will be face-to-face. -face. Um, a number of common core courses will also be face-to-face but the courses are quite large in terms of student enrollment. So depending on the situation with social distancing, we might have to do a kind of mix of online and face-to-face -face options. And we're still working through that right now, but it'll be very clear on the website uh, which option uh, is which, you know, for which courses. But yeah, keep keep that in mind. Good question. Mm -hmm. I think most of the students will be looking for you in person, but I'm sure, sure I'm sure that it will also have a really good learning experience if it was online or physical. Well, we're, we've got a lot of practice from the last year and a half, so we're much better at it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, another question from the student is, what is the range of the number of Common Core courses one can choose? Um, not. So there. In, in any area of inquiry, there are, there are 40 courses per term to choose from, uh, if that's the question. Um, I think that's what they're asking. Yeah, so lots of choices. Look on the website under areas of inquiry and they're fantastically exciting courses. So figure out which ones, you know, like space science for a political scientist or suicide for a biochemist. Figure out which one just excites you and um, get more information about it. I think we're on the lines of um, courses. I actually have a question for Chow and Tiffany here. So what are the most popular CC courses among students? Uh, I actually <laughs> didn't pick courses based on the popularity, right. surprisingly. So I personally, I just uh, went on and look at the uh, description of the courses and then think about what like excite me and then pick those. But I think the, the, the courses that I took got pretty good grade. So if that's like what the students are looking for. She did okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, for me, um, some would say that I'm lucky enough to be enrolled in the gender and sexuality course and mm -hmm. it's such a popular course um, here in HKU. Um, and I, yeah, after thinking and I realized and I know why it's so popular. Um, so in that class, we had more than 200 students um, in one lecture. And um, the experience is very unique. Um, you, for one of the projects, uh, we get to form groups of 10. So you have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of different knowledge from different backgrounds. Um, and um, it's such a fun experience because we get to you know, do like a 10 minute video um, and you get to work with people um, from different backgrounds with their own opinions and their own ideas on a lot of um, the issues that are being discussed. And I do think um, that um, enrolling um, in some of these more popular um, Common Core course um, will give you um, a quite a different experience um, as you really get to meet people from different walks of life. Yeah, can I fill in one little thing? Yeah, sure. So the lectures are quite large, but you'll all be in small tutorials. And so you'll really develop relationships with, with your peers and with tutors and professors too. So yeah, keep that in mind. It, it gets scaled down very quickly for these kind of projects. Yeah, thanks. All right, so moving on, um, another student has a question for uh, Professor Gray. So if he, I take a CC course, is it a one-year course or is it a four-year course? Uh, meaning that is the CC uh, only for taken for one year or you have to take the same CC mm. course for four years? Well, you take different courses every semester. You have to take either four or six, depending on your program of study. Over, and that will vary by faculty. So pay attention to what your faculty says. 
Uh, sometimes it's the first two years that you complete your Common Core requirement, and sometimes it's three or four. Uh, that, again, varies by faculty. So you'll be taking different courses every semester and building up the entire curricular requirement over two to three years or, or longer if you want to, but usually it's by the end of the third year. Mm -hmm. So I think this is along the same line. So I think many students have asking like, when do you actually take common core courses? Do you have to take it in your first year or can you spread it out throughout the four years that you're studying at HKU? Maybe I'll pass this question to Chan Tiffany. Um, so for me, I took it within my first two years of study. So I took uh, one to two CC each mm -hmm. semester. And la like Cray said, um, so I took uh, different courses every semester. So even if I'm taking two courses in one semester, it can be from two different areas of inquiry as well. Yeah. Yeah, I also took uh, my Common Core in the first two years of my studies. Um, I decided to do this mainly because I kind of foresee that uh, coursework or my workload would get a little bit more heavy um, in the last few years of, of my studies. And uh, that's one of re the reasons why uh, I took my Common Core in the first two years. Um, the other reason for that is also because uh, for my first few years, I wanted to have an experience to meet more people and to really get to know the classmates around me. And that's, uh, I thought uh, Common Core would be a great uh, opportunity to do that. Thank you. So I think we've got another question for uh, Professor Gray. So uh, they're asking about the advanced standing system. How does it work exactly? So depending on what you come in with from an IB uh, secondary degree or certain types of credits, you can get Common Core credit for that. Uh, that request comes from your faculty. We're in close touch with all the faculties. And so that decision is made case by case, depending on, on the student record coming in. So it's certainly possible that some of you would have advanced standing. What that would mean was you'd take four instead of six or five instead of six. Okay. So we actually have a quite popular question here that many students are asking. So mm -hmm. is where and when can we access the complete list of Common Core courses? Oh, and when can we start applying for these courses? That's a great question. And <laughs> so, it, it's all gonna be web-based. So go and start looking at the areas of inquiry under which all the courses will be listed. Um, and they're badged in different ways for minors and so forth and so on. I'm, so by the July, all the courses will be posted. We're in the middle of editing all the courses now. And you'll have plenty of time between the moment the courses are posted and when you have to start enrolling. So you will pay close attention to those enrollment deadlines, which you'll, you'll get lots of information about. Um, and then again, feel free to, to ask questions about that. But basically, as we move into July, this year's courses will be up on the web. So I think uh, one of the students asking, are there any specific combinations that are required for the Common Core? For example, maybe at least one course from each of the four years of inquiry? Yeah, so you have to take at least one course from each AOI and then two more of your choice. The only requirements, if, if you decide to do a transdisciplinary minor, that's six courses, so that's all of them. And so you should look at the descriptions of the minors and see if you wanna build your curriculum around a particular uh, topic like sustainability or sexuality and diversity or creative arts or big data or human lifespan, whatever. Because then you have to do some planning uh, and sequencing of courses, but there's many, many, many courses around each of those areas. So you'll still have a ton of choice, but that's the only thing that you'll have to be a little careful about if you decide to minor in uh, one of these clusters. Okay, so another popular question among the students is, what is the rating system for uh, the Common Core courses? So <laughs> perhaps how do they calculate the GPAs and how they rate it? Why don't so we fun? let Chow okay, and Tiffany yeah, sure. take a shot at that um, from your from your student perspective? What? <laughs> I, I guess like, um, so personally for any uh, Common Core courses and even other courses at HKU at the beginning of the semester, the uh, coordinators and the tutors will give you a handout that listed out all of the components that are required for the course. And uh, even the grade distribution 
for different projects. So maybe some common core courses will have like an essay, a presentation, and then tutorial participation. And then they will list like very detailed, like what are the percentage that will contribute to your grade. And at the same time, I think for uh, some of the courses, the uh, the lecturers and the coordinator will also say what are the range that you have to um, get in order to get like say A, B uh, score. So I think it's very, very detailed. And if you cannot find the information like me, I would go and ask my lecturer or course coordinator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to add on to that, I do think that the grading system and uh, the, the assignments and exams that you have to do, they're very transparent um, at the beginning of, of the course. And there is a period for you to get to know the requirements uh, of each of these um, courses before you make a final choice on which to take for that semester. So um, that is a good opportunity for you to have set an expectation for yourself on what you have to do and how you should uh, complete your course um, in the coming semester. So since we're on the, the the line of actually talking about classroom experience, one of the one of the questions is: Did you get to know more students from other faculties when taking the Common Core? So is the project experience with them very different from the ones with your classmates in your own faculty? Uh, definitely, because uh, as a science uh, major, I think I don't. Uh, when I go up to my senior years, I don't really have a lot of group projects. So actually, most of my group work and experiences came from my first few years, and most of them are from the Common Core courses. So, and some of them are even still friends with me until today, and we mm -hmm. as we go further along our academic journey. So yeah. Yeah, I also agree with Chow. Um, so for me as a law student, I really don't get a lot of chances to do projects with other students. And uh, in my Common Core courses, I get to do that a lot. And uh, the different thing that I get to do um, is that in Common Core, they have a more flexible or even you can say more creative ways of um, doing uh, group projects. So sometimes you have to film like a movie or sometimes you have to make say um, a different sorts of presentations, not just one where you stand before a PowerPoint um, and talk. So I do think that those experience uh, really add on to uh, my university studies. That's great. So I think we have time for one last question. I think this is tied again for all of you, uh, Apostle. So um, this student asks, for research in science and engineering, junior students may not have enough background or prior knowledge, such as mathematics, to do the actual task. Um, is there any advice that you want to give or maybe perhaps how does HPU can deal with that sort of problem? Yeah, why don't you guys take that first and then I can wrap that question up. Um, so for um, engineering students, right? But uh, it could be any specialty, any maybe. specialty. Oh, yeah, um, for dealing with the common core. Uh, for the research projects in science and engineering, yeah. right? the projects that you guys have joined. Oh, yes. that one. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, my research experience um, in doing those projects um, is an experience where you get to um, contribute with what you're good at and then you get to learn from other people who have something to contribute and share. Um, so. Um, no one is expecting you to be an expert in everything. And what's so unique about these projects is that you will be an expert in your own area and then you will be contributing that to the project. And in turn, you get to learn from other people and what they know from um, their studies. Uh, and on top of that, because you have to come up with, say, a final product together, you learn to um, integrate and um, mix together um, knowledge from um, each other. And at the same time, you have plenty of chances to say, read up on your own and learn something beyond what you, you usually do for your majors. So I think um, you don't have to worry too much about um, not being, not having um, the background knowledge to deal with everything at the same time, because um, the common core and the research projects that come with it, they are um, experiences for you to learn um, with picking um, baby steps and um, trying and failing and trying again and eventually having something um, to show um, to the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. So adding on Tiffany's uh, comment, so I would say that um, 
when I first came to university, I had the impression that research is something like within the laboratory and it has to be something very uh, advanced. But actually when I joined these um, different research projects in university, I figured that the core of research is for you to ask questions and learn how to uh, improve your questions over time. And eventually maybe you wouldn't be able to find the definite answer, but you will understand your questions are clearer at the end of the journey. So I think that is a very good practice and a takeaway that I apply uh, in the two research, uh, transdisciplinary research experience with the Common Core. And later on in my final year, when I conduct a capstone research project, I apply the same technique of uh, raising questions and the thought process to raise uh, an inquiry in order to do my science research. So I would say that you just try research early on and do not think that it's something so uh, difficult because actually it's just a way for you to find out what you're interested in, your curiosity and build up on that and work together with your friends in order to understand a topic that you're interested in more, yeah. And then those habits will come in incredibly handy when you get into your advanced years and you're studying biogenetics or law and co contracts and torts. I never knew what torts was. You have to, um, or uh, aerospace engineering. So they're not the same thing, but we want you to do research as soon as you want to do research when you get to HKU and we can arrange for that. But that, as, as Chow said, will lead to a kind of disposition and set of habits that will be invaluable for you once you get into your advanced years or decide to do postgraduate work or, or what have you. Yep. And with that note, uh, I think that comes to an end of the staff induction of the HQU Common Core. Once again, thank you, Professor Gray, and thank you, Chow and Tiffany, for joining us. If any of you would like to revisit some of the top topics that we have discussed within this episode, uh, please feel free to visit, revisit our HKU YouTube channel, as well as check out the Common Core website. Uh, we have all the information on there. And that note, thank you for joining us and see you next time. Great, thank you.